So this is the time when we have our, our speaker, and uh, normally it's Helen or Jonathan in the past. And now we, today we have a guest speaker. And I could, have, I could be standing here talking and reading so much that I read on the internet about you and your long bio, but I'm going to read the short bio to give you all the time you need. So we have Shannon Skinner with us today. Shannon is an award-winning broadcaster, speaker, and author. And she's the host and producer of Extraordinary Women TV with Shannon Skinner, Hunters TV, and radio show Shannon Skinner Live on Voice America. She's a regular contributor to a number of publications, including her own personal blog, which reaches millions. Her featured appearances and inspirational talks are inspiring men and women all around the globe. Her signature book, The Whispering Heart, Your Inner Guide to Creativity, provides how-to guidance to discovering and living your dream. She writes for several publications on women's issues and travel, her greatest source of inspiration. And we have her right here in Toronto, so please welcome Shannon Skinner. <laughs> Good morning, um, every morning. Yeah, and happy Father's Day. I'd like to send a shout out to my father in Alberta. Actually, just before we started, I was sending him a text, wishing him a happy Father's Day. He doesn't never picks up the phone, so I don't even bother to call anyway. Uh, he's a dad, you know, guys are like that. Um, but I'm so thrilled to be here this morning, and I'm grateful for the invitation. The band, just wow, you know, amazing. Um, and uh, hello to Helen, too, if she's uh, watching. So today, I'm, I, I have a, a few talks that I, that I give, but the heart of everything that I speak about is really following your heart. Um, and this morning, I, I really wanted to talk about a topic, so I just did it, defying the naysayers. We all know about naysayers, we have them in our lives, uh, and I would just like to address that this morning. So, and thank you for... Uh, my, reading my bio, uh, and not reading my long bio. <laughs> I'd be here all day. <laughs> I actually just celebrated my 51st birthday yesterday, so when I think when you reach at that point in your life, you start racking up stuff that you've done. <laughs> the good and the bad. Well, I've done all sorts of adventurous things in my life. I've lived abroad, I've studied abroad, I've traveled the world. A lot of it's solo. Uh, I've started businesses. I've changed careers, I've become a broadcaster, I've made movies, um, all sorts of crazy things. Uh, but a lack of confidence early on in my life really stopped me from doing many more things that I wanted to do, and I dreamt about. And obstacles would get in the way, like fear, guilt, resentment, and the biggest one of all, self-doubt. But then there are the naysayers. You know, those are the people who will always have something to say that, or pardon me, they will always say something cannot get done, no matter what. They poo-poo your dreams. They can't see your vision. I heard we talked about vision this morning. Now, I, and I've identified three types of naysayers, and I write about this in my book, The Whispering Heart, Your Inner Guide to Creativity. There's a fire-breathing dragon, and that's the one who is negative all the time. Doesn't matter what you're doing. <laughs> Right? They sear every idea. I want to do this. No! Shh. Gone. Obliterate. We all have somebody like that in our lives, right? Yeah? Okay. I have one. Energy vampire. Energy vampire is another naysayer, right? The energy vampire is somebody who's negative all the time. Um, nothing's going to work out. Nothing's going to be good. Why even bother? Um, now, the energy vampire is is someone who themselves is dealing with pain, the emotional pain. So they can't deal with your joy, they can't deal with your pain either because they're just in so much pain. So they become a naysayer. And then there's a supporter. Now, these are the sneaky ones because they're the ones that are just saying, yeah, go for it, go for it. But, but I caution you, be careful because now these people you want in your life, you want the supporters. And you want somebody who might say, be careful, take your time. Did you think about this? Have you been aware of that? You know, these are good, but they too are naysayers. 
the only thing that really truly is not a naysayer in your heart is, or in your life is really your own heart. It knows its truth. It knows your truth. It's the greatest lie detector God has ever built. So, now why are they like this? Because when somebody can't make their own dreams come true, they don't want you to make your dream come true either. That's unconscious, I think, in most cases. And I say this not to judge these people, not to judge anyone who's in pain, anyone who's not there supporting you, but to love them and understand them. So when somebody tells you that you can't do something, and that very thing that they're telling you that you can't do might actually be your destiny, it might be your calling, maybe you don't even know it yet, you just have to do it. Now, I've learned this, uh, a few of these lessons over the years, and uh, let me say, Ike, when I was in my second year of university at the University of Saskatchewan, which is in Saskatoon, in case nobody knows where it is. Yay, yay. I'm headed there in a few weeks again. So I was studying sociology and criminology. At that time, I thought that I had some delusion that I was going to become a lawyer. I don't know. I'm glad I didn't, because I think I would have been unhappy doing it. But too much paperwork for me. But I had this idea that I was going to be uh, a lawyer. And when I was in my second year university, the, there was a summer job program that came up that was funded by the university, by the government of Saskatchewan, and also by the RCMP, that took on students for the summer train them as RCMP at the RCMP training grounds in Regina and sent them out to, into communities, paid. Well, I thought this sounded really cool and I thought it wouldn't be great to get to know that side of the law, right? Because that's the, the purpose of it. But you know, I was 19 years old, I think, 19, and I was maybe 110 pounds. And Two of my male friends were applying for this, and I thought, you know, because they're, they're criminologists, you know, and I thought, this is going to be really cool, you know, I, I'm going to be part of this too. And they said to me, you're never going to do it. You can't do that. That was sort of the feedback I was getting. So somehow I found my backbone, and I thought, in spite of you, I'm going to apply and see where it goes. So guess what? I just did it. And I got into the program. So here I am. Go, I go through the RCMP training, firearm training, self-defense, learning how to you know, pull guys twice my size out of cars, how to shove them in cars. I mean, it was just really the law. <laughs> like it was driving you know, cruisers and everything. It was really quite, uh, it was quite something. And, uh, and, and it fit the bill for adventure for me for the summer. But here I am. I'm sitting one night in the cruiser. Uh, driving, I had a pillbox hat, you know, my, like, you know, those hats. We, we actually weren't issued firearms, by the way, but only one time I was given a firearm, but we did, we were trained. So anyway, I'm in the cruiser, and um, there's a car that pulled out in front of us, and it's looking a little suspicious. In the meantime, my constable that I'm with, uh, who was my passenger, was teasing me, you're never going to make it, you're never going to do it. You, you know, who are you? You're wet behind the ears. 19-year-old, 110 pounds something, right? So this car pulls out, and it starts going faster. And I'm like, okay, you know, it's going faster. And he says, Shannon, kid, actually called me kid. Actually called me the, the pierogi queen, because my mother's Ukrainian. So they call me the pierogi queen, kid, turn on the lights. So I turn on the lights of the cruiser, and the car's not stopping. So it keeps going, and I'm thinking, oh my god. So it's going faster, and it's going faster, and he said, Go, faster, faster. I'm like, oh my God. And I'm thinking, what have I gotten myself into? Like, maybe I'm not cut out for this, right? Like, maybe everybody's right and I was wrong here. <laughs> did, I, did I miss something? So I just did it. I stepped on the gas pedal. The car was going ahead of me, it was going faster. And now I am full blown Dukes of Hazard driving this car. <laughs> Screaming down the highways of Saskatchewan, off dirt roads, into the fields, the guys doing cookies, throwing dirt all over the place, right? He didn't want to get caught. So, and my legs are wobbling, and I'm not really sure I'm going to be able to do this, but I did it. Now, the end result was the guy, didn't, got, the guy got away with it, uh, but I did it. 
I seem to have to prove something to myself. But this is really the beginning, I think, of my journey of believing in myself. Now, the following year, I decided it was time to take a break from school. And uh, I had this great idea of moving to London, England, uh, and traveling through Europe and seeing the world. Uh, I was unsure of where I wanted to go in life, which actually seems to be the story of my life. So I went home to one weekend where my parents were in Saskatchewan to tell my father that I was going to be finished school. And I had this idea and I wanted to go to, um, to live in London. And so I'm sitting there in the living room with my dad and my dad's sitting there with his newspaper. Does anybody have, did anybody have a dad who sat with newspaper, and every time you're trying to talk to them, they just sat behind the wall of newspaper? Yeah, that was my dad. This is something really important, so I'm trying to, like, you know, Dad, I'm thinking I'm going to be done school. Don't worry, you don't have to pay for anything. I'm going to go to London. And, and he just sat there with, behind his wall of newspaper, and he said, Shannon, you're such a dreamer. So, code for you'll never do it, right? So, my dad's the best naysayer in my life. <laughs> So my back gets up, I find my backbone again, and the first thing I do right the next day is I'm back in Saskatoon, and I go to the travel agency, and it's not even opened yet. I'm the first person there. I mean, this is when we had travel agents. You know, remember when you used to book through travel agents? So then I'm standing at the glass door, my nose pressed against glass like this, waiting, because I've decided that's it. I'm going to do it. Bought a one-way ticket to London. I had no plans, nobody... I knew, I didn't know what I was going to do, but I had to prove to my father, and probably more so to myself, that I could do it. So I just did it. And uh, I really began my adventures, and, uh, and really here I am today uh, as, as a result of that decision. And now, fast forward to the summer of 2010, uh, when I was out one night for dinner with my friends, um, exactly would have been this weekend, uh, exactly uh, 2010. It was a birthday celebration. And I was out for dinner with a married couple friend of mine, uh, friends of mine who I'd known for years. Now, I started to tell them about a new dream I had. Something I've learned in life is that when you start having a dream, you probably want to keep it to yourself. It's probably a good idea because the naysayers will, you know, <laughs> breathe their breath on you and diminish it. But anyway, so... I tell my friends, I've got this idea. I want to start a radio show. So my friend, and I was very excited, and my friend said to me, you know, Shannon, you're such a dreamer. <laughs> Where have I heard that before? Which, of course, is code for you'll never do it. So I began stewing, which I'm really good at doing. I went home. I stewed some more. I was determined. I began working on my radio show concept. But then I got even a better idea. How about an online TV show? And so the idea of Extraordinary Women TV came to me. It was born. And then I just did it. I launched Extraordinary Women TV as an internet show. And a few weeks later, it would eventually become a television show. And as a result, hundreds of women have shared their messages of, of wisdom uh, on my show. I would say well over 300 probably close to 400 now, touching the lives of really thousands of people, if not millions, uh, around the world. So if you call me a dreamer, if you tell me I can't do something, I just might do it. So about those naysayers, love them. Be grateful for them because they serve a purpose. They push you to grow and they help you live the life that you were meant to live. So just do it. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Thank you.